You're making a Minecraft server and you want to know how to port forward for a Minecraft server. Well, in this video, we're going to show you exactly how to do that. And I do want to mention there's an in-depth text guide in the description down below on port forwarding for a Minecraft server. This is great because if you're like me, you kind of like text guides for stuff like this. So we have one for you here. Otherwise, we're going to show you everything in this video as well. Now, first things first, I do want to mention we're assuming you've already made a Minecraft server. That's because you need a server in order to be able to port forward. And of course, there's a link in the description down below to our complete guide on making a Minecraft server. It's got text, but it's also got a video up here at the top. Both of these, the article and the video, are always on the most recent version of Minecraft here. Nevertheless, at this point, let's go ahead and get your port forward done. If we go ahead and minimize our browser, we'll see my Minecraft server here. And what we want to do is open up our command prompt. So go ahead and open up the start menu and type in CMD, and you will have the command prompt here. Open that up, and then in the command prompt, you want to type IPCONFIG, IPConfig, exactly like this, and hit enter. Now, go ahead and get to where you can write something down. This could be a sticky note, or it could be in notepad on your computer. It is completely up to you. Now, at this point, what we want to do is copy and paste over the IPv4 address. So we want to go ahead and copy that, IPv4 and the default gateway. Those are the two things that we're going to need from this. Now, if you have two default gateways here, we want the one on the bottom that's just numbers. The one on the top is not needed here. We just need this one on the bottom that is numbers. Go ahead and copy that and paste it. Now, these numbers are most likely different for you than they are for me, and that's why I'm showing you how to get them in command prompt than just giving them to you. Now, at this point, I do want to mention that port forwarding is kind of difficult and it's a little bit more complicated and you're gonna need things like your router password and all that and we're gonna cover how to find those things in this video but you don't need any of that at our company Simple Game Hosting. It's the first link in the description down below the breakdown the XYZ slash simple and it allows you to make a Minecraft server the simple way in just a few minutes. No port forwarding is required. It's in the name Simple Game Hosting. Of course no port forwarding is required there and on top of that you can easily add mods, plugins, and mod packs to your server Really customizing your server any way that you want. It can be public or private, the choice is up to you, and it's on high quality hardware that's meant to run Minecraft servers, meaning that your server will have the best performance possible. Lastly, there's expert live chat support there to help you out, so should you run into any issues along the way, there's someone there to help you with your server and get it running perfectly. So stop struggling to host a Minecraft server and start your Minecraft server the simple way with no port forwarding required at the first link in the description down below, the breakdown.xyz slash simple. Now with that being said, we've got our IPv4 address and default gateway here from the command prompt so we can go ahead and close out of the command prompt then what we want to do is open up our browser in our browser open up a brand new tab and in this brand new tab what we want to do is go ahead and type in the default gateway up here at the top where you would normally type youtube.com simplegamehosting.com something like that up here at the top go ahead and paste in that default gateway and hit enter now at this point you should have some sort of login box appeared as I mentioned earlier you're gonna need your routers password and your username in order to log into it. Now, my login box looks like this. Yours may be in the center and more of a GUI type thing. It might be a pop-up, but there's going to be some sort of a login box up here. Now, how do you find this? Well, if you know it, awesome, go ahead and type it in. But if you don't, there's a link in the description down below to our guide on how to find your router's password. Specifically, it goes through methods, method one, two, three, four, five, so on and so forth, until you get to eventually contacting your ISP, which most people don't have to do. Pretty much everyone's able to get their username and password for their router by method four, and then they're good to go, right? They're able to log in at that point. But first, try method one, usually the easiest, then two, then three, and then four, and then eventually contacting your ISP, which... I know none of us really want to do. At this point, though, I'm going to go ahead and log into my router, and then we can move on with port forwarding. So here we are logged into my router, and your router probably looks completely different than what I have here. And that's okay, because we've got a guide in the description down below on how to port forward on any router that goes over the top routers that are out there today and how to port forward on those. So watch this video, and even if your router's not mentioned, it can be nice to watch through that and kind of see what other routers and port forwarding looks like, because a lot of routers are pretty similar. So even if your router isn't in that video specifically, you might be like, you know, this is a lot like a Netgear, this is a lot like a Linksys router, whatever router that you end up, you know, having something similar to in this video, even if your specific router's not in there, 
is a good thing to kind of watch and kind of pick up the terms and all of that stuff. Now, I'm going to be going over a lot of that in this video, but I do want to mention that is available if you'd rather use it. Now, let's go ahead and move on to actually port forwarding. Now, what you're looking for here is port forwarding within this router software. Now, for me, that's going to be an advanced then it's going to be in advanced again, and then it's going to be in port forwarding slash port triggering. Now, this is where you're going to be able to add a port forward if you're me, but what are you looking for? Well, unfortunately, port forwarding could be in a bunch of different locations, so look around for things like advanced, advanced administration, advanced security. It could be just in a security tab. It could be in an apps and gaming tab. It could be in a NAT forwarding tab, NAT forwarding. It could be in single port forwarding. It could be in port forwarding slash port triggering. It could be in port triggering slash port forwarding. Also, don't be afraid to just click around on random things within your router looking for port forwarding. Generally, you're not going to break anything in your router as long as you don't save anything but your port forward. So click around all you want. The other places I've seen it is things like a setup tab, but usually it's going to be either an advanced tab, a security tab, a firewall tab, or an apps and gaming tab. For me, again, advanced, advanced again, and then port forwarding slash port triggering. Then what we want to do is go ahead and add a port forward. Now for me, that's add a custom service, but for you, it could just be a plus button. It could be an add port forward. It could be an add port, or it could just be a big list of empty boxes. And if that's the case, use the first empty box on that list. Now for the service name or ID, this is just going to identify what the port forward is for. So we're going to go ahead and do Minecraft server. For the protocol, you want to do TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or literally the word both. It could be the word both. If for whatever reason you can't select both, do this twice, leaving everything else the same, once for TCP and once for UDP. You may have to change the name as well, so you could do like Minecraft server TCP, but generally you'll be able to select both of these in the dropdown, and that's so what we can do here, TCP slash UDP. Now for external port, internal port, first port, second port, Anything involving the word port, P-O-R-T here, what you want to do is enter in 25565. So external port, hey, Nick said port. If you see port, that's what you want to enter in, 25565. So internal port, hey, there's that word again, port. So we want to enter in 25565 for anything involving the word port. Now, last but not least, we're going to need our internal IP address. This could also be your local IP address. It could be a bunch of different things. We're going to be some sort of an IP address. That's assuming it has it. You may just have a device or drop down list and need to select from that. Now, what this is, is that IPv4 address we found earlier. So for me, that's 192.168.1.2. And we can see all that's here, 192.168.1, and I just have to in dot two. Now, I could also select this from this list here if I wanted, but generally, just go ahead, type in your IP, or select the device you're starting your server on. So for me, right here it is, 192.168.1.2. That's the shuttle, that's my computer, and I could go ahead and select that if I wanted instead of entering in the IP address here. Now, at this point, you can go ahead and apply, save, confirm, all of that stuff, whatever you need to do to save the port forward. And that is for 99% of you. There's 1% of you that will need a public or external IP address to save the port forward. Luckily, every single person watching this video needs that public IP address because that's how your friends are ultimately going to join the server. They're going to be using your public IP. So in the description down below, we have a link to here. This is what's my IP address. It's where you can go and get your IP address and see the information you can get from your IP, which is why it's so important that you only use this server for private people you would invite over to your house. You can see your city, your state, your latitude and longitude coordinates can can be grabbed from your IP address, so it's important to keep this private. Now, you can only see 4-3 here for me because, well, again, you want to keep this private, and the last two digits really don't matter too much. So we can go ahead and click to copy that, and we can now use this in Minecraft to join our server. If you did need it for your port forward, go ahead back over there, type it in, you're good to go, and now we can minimize our browser and go ahead and start our server. So open your server folder, start your server, and open up Minecraft because it's time to join. So here we are, Minecraft is open and our server has been started. To join the server, go to multiplayer, proceed, add a server. I'm going to name this public IP because this is joining using our public IP. And then paste in your public IP for the server address here. You can see the 4.3 is the same as earlier. Again, you can only see that because you want to keep this as private as possible and posting it on a public video on the internet is not a good idea. So go ahead and click done here. And after a few seconds, it will go ahead and resolve. I do want to mention that, again, at Simple Game Hosting, no port forwarding is required whatsoever. 
but our server can now be joined here. So if we double click on it, we'll see us join in on the left hand side. I'm going to keep that covered because the uh, IP address will show there as well. So it's important to kind of keep that covered. But you can see the Nix games right there starting to join in. And uh, we're good to go, right? We are on the server and our friends can now join it using the public IP as well. So you would just send them that public IP address that you found on that website earlier, send them that, and then you'll be able to join the server and be good to go. Now, I do want to lastly mention here that for some people, you won't be able to join your server via the public IP. And that's okay because you can always join the server. We'll just use Direct Connect with the IP local host. All one word, all combined like that. If we join the server, it will join right on in. And that's because some ISPs don't allow you to connect back to yourself. When you're using your public IP, basically what you're doing is connecting back to your own connection. That's a little weird and a lot of ISPs don't allow that. So you can always join using the local host IP. Your friends though must join using that public IP address. However, what if they can't? What if you've done all this, you've port forwarded, and they still can't join your server? Well, in that case, what you're going to want to do is make sure that your antivirus and firewall, things like that, are turned off. I know it's not necessarily safe to do that. Do it temporarily. See if your friends can join. If they can, you can troubleshoot further because... Windows Defender is often the reason Minecraft servers can't be joined, and we have a guide in the description on how to allow Java through your firewall for Minecraft servers, specifically Windows Defender. It's helped almost 400,000 people, and it can help you to get people to join your server if they run into issues and, for whatever reason, cannot join the server once it's live through your public IP. Lastly, I do want to mention this, which is linked down below. It's how to fix a broken Minecraft server. A lot of times you will run into issues and errors and things like that in your server, and you'll want to fix those. This goes through fixing those errors and how to basically get your server up and running and fixed when it inevitably does break. For example, often your IPv4 address will change, and you'll need to come over here in your port forward and change that right to the new IPv4 address that is covered in this guide alongside tons of other stuff. So give it a watch through and make sure you can get your server fixed when it does break. You'll be like, hey, I watched that 20 minute video one time. I know how to fix it. Here we go. So there you have it. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. But you now know how to port forward for a Minecraft server in 2025. We'll see you in the next video and I'm out. Peace.